I just tell the truth and telling the truth is crazy in a world full of lies. If you mix brilliance with bravery, that we can ignite something, even this conversation alone can ignite the people. The time is now to express and for people to believe in themselves. The time is now for it to be okay to be great. People in this world shun people for being great, for being a bright color, for standing out. But the time is now to be okay to be the greatest you. Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl Kelly, and we are back with another video. If you guys are new to the channel and you enjoy true crime stories, news, politics, and so much more, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, guys. I really would appreciate it. And if you are a returning listener subscriber, well, thank you guys, as always, for being a friend. I really appreciate y'all, and please like the video if you like it. Give me a comment. Whatever you can do, it really does help me out, and it's a free way to do so. And I thank everyone in advance for watching this video. You know the, you know the thing. So let's get right into it. Okay guys, let's get right into this here topic for today. We're going to be talking about Fulton County and this YSL trial that, I'm going to be honest, I have not been keeping up with because it's been going on for the past 511 days, years, decades, millennium. Um, it seems like this trial has been the longest thing that's ever happened in the history of the criminal justice system. But something really interesting happened over the, the last week and throughout the weekend and I wanted to go in here and talk about it because I think that it's very indicative of what we've seen previously in Fulton County and with the DA who is none other than Fanny Fatass Willis okay who has I mean just like completely tarnished and absolutely ruined her reputation by bringing these two RICO cases one against Donald Trump and then this one here against YSL, Young Thug, and uh, the rappers of Atlanta that she decided to overreach with both of these cases and they're both crumbling like, you know, the empire of Rome crumbled, okay? It's, it's just absolutely poetic justice and you love to see it. It couldn't happen to a better person than Fannie Willis who's being made to look like a buffoon uh, by bringing both of these cases and not only her, this judge as well as the other judge in the Trump case, not so much him, but this one here, I don't know what's gonna happen to him. I feel like he, he might end up in jail for all I know, but we're gonna look at uh, a breakdown of basically a shortened, condensed version of how and, and why these charges were brought. And then we're gonna look at the latest shenanigans as to why this really kind of exploded over the last weekend and the uh, last week in court. And I wanna know you guys' thoughts, so let me know. So without further ado, let's get into it. So these are all the defendants. This guy over here, it looks like he wants to end it. Um, so these are like all the defendants and all of their lawyers, or most of them. Some of them might not even be pictured right here. There's, it wraps around the whole entire, I mean, there's not even room for anybody to sit anywhere. We have finally concluded the first week of the criminal trial of rapper Young Thug or Jeffrey Lamar Williams and his five co-defendants. And let's not forget, the rapper and his alleged co-gang members stand accused of running one of the biggest criminal enterprises in Atlanta history. That's what we're talking about when we say a RICO or racketeering conspiracy case, that there was a, an agreement to break the law. And these defendants and their unindicted co-conspirators took overt steps or acts to further this criminal enterprise known as YSL. Prosecutors say YSL is called Young Slime Life. Defense contending YSL is really just a record label. But now the trial kicked off on Monday, November 27th, after the Thanksgiving holiday. And we're finally starting to hear what the prosecutors say they can prove. And what defense attorneys, or all six attorneys, have to say in response. The prosecution plans to show that Young Thug and his alleged co-conspirators were in this conspiracy together to further their criminal enterprise, meaning that there was an agreement, they acted in concert to further their gang, make money, gain notoriety or influence, that sort of thing. And they allegedly did all of that by orchestrating assaults, hijackings, burglaries, drug deals, and even murder. This is what we, again, are talking about with Rico Racketeering. Agreement to break the law, overt acts taken by Young Thug and his co-defendants and others in furtherance of this conspiracy. I know I keep saying it, but it's important to remember what we're talking about. And by the way, prosecutors are planning to prove 191 overt acts in this case. Girl. Wonder why this trial is going to last months. The prosecution, again, has to show for a racketeering conspiracy case that everything was done by these co-defendants for the purpose, the sole purpose of the criminal enterprise. That these crimes and acts 
were done not to benefit themselves as individuals, but the gang collectively. That's, That's the stupid. key. That's why she focuses on the pack. And that young thug is the alleged leader of this hack or criminal enterprise. Now, as one would expect in a trial with so many defendants, there were definitely a lot of interruptions right off the bat. And that led to some tension in the courtroom. Did I have a rule on that issue? You said that you would do it later as it came Okay, up. well, here's the thing. Later is now. I got a jury in a box, so you could have asked me that an hour. I mean, we had time this morning. I could have gone through that this morning and That's made clarity on it for both sides. No, just I wish that the court would just follow their own instruction. Ah! Well, I, I'll follow my instructions when you all bring to my attention what you need to in a timely manner. Oh you know, you all don't listen to the court, and, I'm, and it's going to get you all in a lot of hot water. You need to listen to me when I tell you something. And don't rely upon your own understanding. These jurors are waiting back there. We are dallying out here. So, you didn't follow my instructions, Mr. Steele. I, I mean, that's what I asked you all to do. I asked you all to share each... We're already behind to begin with. Any further objections? And on slide 10 and 13, they misquoted the Instagram post. I get, they misquoted it? Yes, they did. It says, I bet YSL make the news tonight. That's not what the Instagram post says. Your Honor, we actually copied the Instagram post into slides 10 and 13. And it does not say tonight. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'll take out the word tonight. Better. Yeah, it was a mess. And adding to the clownery and the buffoonery, and the absolute shit show nature of this trial was this very special moment where they decided to act the fuck up and play Young Thug's uh, hit record, okay, lifestyle in court, which I have to admit, I agree with these TikToks and I agree with all of the, uh, you know, videos that people were putting out in regards to this being played in open court and how much I would have been jamming the fuck out in that motherfucker. I would have been, uh, you know, in contempt for sure, without a doubt. <laughs> You know, I just, it, it, it couldn't have been me. It could not have been me because I would have straight acted the ass. All the comments, I agree with them all, you know. Uh, I, I just, there's no way. There's no way. It, me, the dancing emoji, uh, judge, juror 10, you're dismissed. And, uh, you know, I completely get it. I completely get it. This is, this is what I relate to right here. If I was a juror on the YSL trial. <laughs> should be dismissed let's just throw it out you know fuck it because it's not serious we're not a serious country when we're doing things like this and bringing charges against rappers you know who have the first amendment right to say whatever the fuck they want a lot of these rappers anyways cap all day long they cap and they say shit that's not even fucking true half the time and if you're gonna charge people for conspiring to do crimes, uh, I got newsflash for you. You're gonna have to charge pretty much like um, everyone in the fucking hood. You know, everyone living in poverty who has friends uh, and who is a criminal who has friends, go ahead and charge them too. It's just utter clown shit. Same thing with like the Donald Trump Rico trial. It's a joke and we're not a serious country when we're doing things like this. While there's actual real crimes taking place, individuals committing individualized crimes. Like, since when are we punishing a whole entire group of people for something that, you know, you're saying they're all conspiring on, like it's this big old fucking like get together of like criminal activity, like a beehive of criminal activity. No, they're just fucking criminals. 
all getting together because they're all friends and they're all rappers. It's like, it's not that fucking deep, I don't think, really. Like, let's just be honest. So, you know, it's, it's just been off to a very rocky start, to say the least. This judge has yelled at everyone from somebody sitting in the gallery during jury selection. You know, he's he's yelled at, you know, the actual jurors themselves. He's yelled at the state. He's yelled at the defense. He's yelled at witnesses on the stand. I mean, he is a powder keg of insanity. And the way that he has been running this courtroom has been an absolute and utter circus. And that really came to a head over last week's court proceedings in which the lead defense attorney for Young Thug stood up to make a motion and it really just popped straight the fuck off. So accusations of a secret meeting between the judge, prosecution, and a key witness have thrown Rapp's biggest trial into disarray. A Georgia criminal defense attorney breaks down the big questions. So on Monday, everything exploded. Brian Steele, Young Thug's lead attorney, accused Judge Ural Glanville of holding a secret meeting with the prosecution and a witness named Kenneth Copeland without notifying the defense. In almost all cases, Georgia law prohibits this kind of ex parte meetings from taking place. Steele said a source had told him that in the meeting, Copeland agreed to take the stand after the prosecution suggested that he could remain in jail until all the cases of all 26 defendants in the RICO trial are completed. This would constitute coercion witness intimidation and ex parte communications Steele said as he requested a mistrial and he's absolutely right so let's look at this moment how did you find out about any of that well i'm gonna disturb too you got five minutes well you know, i don't need i want to continue mr Steele. i am gonna hold you under um, still hold you in summary criminal contempt just when you thought it couldn't get any crazier the rico trial against rapper young thug and several co-defendants just took another very wild turn we're breaking down what led to the judge to storm out of the courtroom and a lead defense attorney in the custody of the bailiff welcome to sidebar presented by law and crime <laughs> and, Jesse Weber. and this concerns williams lead defense attorney brian Steele. You see, the prosecutor, Adrian Love, told the court that there was more evidence that hadn't been turned over to the state. There is a matter regarding the jail calls that we were provided. Mr. Steele has not yet provided us the ISO file. Um, we again, we received something additional on a thumb drive last night. We had the head of our, the deputy of our jail call unit look at that. And we are again I mean, missing. We do not have the complete file to be able to play though. to be able to access it properly to be able to look at it authenticate the calls the time of day, all of that we don't have it well mr Steele did not take kindly to what prosecutor adrian love was saying judge Glenn, sir you allow another moment when mr love calls me that they cannot do something they have the exact image of what we got from the jail in fayette county that is it and if i get another false allegation and you do nothing i'm shocked i'm appalled at you oh, i sit here day after day with this false if you if i get another false allegation from Miss Steele, and you do nothing. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be shocked. I'm gonna be shocked. That's that's quite the threat. Allegation, just machine. I gave the state everything. There's not been no disconstruction. Piss this There's white man no off. Purposeful. I don't care. I don't care. I give over everything. I've done this for 33 years. Oh never in my life have I seen a trial. I've done 300 appeals in the state of Georgia alone. I've never read a case like this. Judge, I gave them everything I had. I waited. I was at my office till eight after eight last night. Waited for their investigator to come by, handed him an exact copy of Thumb Drive. They have everything that we got from the Fayette County Jail. There's been no deconstruction. There's been no purposeful exclusion. This is not the first time. And I apologize that I'm getting temper, but I've never been treated like this. You talk about professionalism every week. Professionalism is lacking with one lawyer here. It has never been. I don't even like coming to court. I used to love this. I would die for what we do. I used to say, I'm dying, I, I would die, I couldn't choose a better profession. If I had litigated with Miss Love, I would I would. Your Honor, can we strike no, the hominem no, attack? No, 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 Everybody, calm crash. down, calm down, everybody, Miss, me, both please. of you, see, both of you, please be seated. Judge, judge, I'm you know, the Fulton County DA's office is just full of hood rats and fucking hookers, okay? They all need to be removed from their positions. This is a joke. This is a joke. From Fannie Willis herself to the one uh, gay twink that couldn't argue his way out of the paper bag during the Trump hearing. And this lady right here. And then this one down here that can't stop putting her damn head in her hands because she's probably so damn embarrassed. Uh, of these whole proceedings. I just don't even know what's going on here. Because what kind of unserious business is this? Fulton County, are you guys okay? Not okay please be seated. You have to do something. Wow. So ah. I don't know, Mr. Steele, but clearly from like watching him. this trial, you can tell like he is very passionate. 
He's not afraid to make his point, and he is not afraid to stand up even to the judge. And I want you to keep that in mind. Because this wasn't the first time that Steele and Judge Earl Glanville have had words, and we've covered that before on Sidebar. And tell you what, it wouldn't be the last. Because now, let's talk about Monday. And honestly, this was a blow-up that is arguably of historic proportions in this case. So after the lunch break on Monday, Brian Steele wanted to bring something to the court's attention. He says someone told him about a meeting in chambers between Judge Glanville, the prosecutors, and one of their key witnesses, Kenneth Copeland, also known as Lil Woody. Now, Kenneth Copeland's name has come up before during the course of this case. In fact, video of Copeland during an interrogation with investigators was leaked earlier on in this trial, and in it, Copeland appears to implicate Williams in criminal activity. So he was offered what's called use immunity, and that's when what he testifies to, his testimony, what he says on the stand, can't be used against him by the state does become an interesting question if federal authorities could use it against him for federal charges, but that's a separate issue. Anyway, so Steele says that in that ex parte meeting, Copeland allegedly confessed to killing Donovan Thomas. Prosecutors have argued that oh Williams God. rented a car that was used in the drive-by shooting of Thomas back in 2015. Yeah, it's a key sweater. component of this oh case. My. And Steele also <laughs> told the court that he was aware that assistant prosecutor Simone Hilton had oh allegedly God. told Copeland, who had pled the fifth on Friday and barely answered any questions on Monday, that he could actually be held in jail until all the defendants, all 26 of them, had their cases dispensed with. And oh. who knows how long that could take. So Steele was basically, basically saying this is a kind of threat put forward by the prosecution. Now, a few things here. First, ex parte communications, ex parte meetings, meaning one-on-one -on -one with the judge without the other parties present, that can be problematic, particularly criminal defendants who can argue they have a right to be there, particularly if there is exculpatory information being disclosed. The defendant has a right to have that evidence presented to them, especially when you have a sworn in witness having this essentially one-on-one -on -one conversation with the judge. So the judge is not concerned with the fact that it might have been witness intimidation to drag this witness who was sworn in into his chambers and have an inappropriate meeting with the prosecution. He's not concerned with the appearance of that. He's more concerned with who told you? Who told you this? I mean, to say it's outrageous is an understatement. I am blown away. And I mean, this might like go over people's heads to a certain extent because it is a little bit confusing and if you don't aren't familiar with the the legal verbiage and like all of the you know um technical terms that are being used here it's kind of um difficult to immediately catch on to what exactly they're saying but basically ex parte means uh, a meeting that's held with the judge and one of the parties with the parties being either the defense or the prosecution and these things are allowed to happen under certain circumstances and there's rules and regulations in order to facilitate that happening and so basically what the defense here is accusing both the judge and the prosecution of is including in their ex parte meeting a witness a sworn in witness and not telling the defense side about the meeting or about what was going to transpire by bringing the uh, sworn in witness into this ex parte meeting, which from what I understand is very, very much not allowed. It's very frowned upon. So he's going to go into a little bit more here, but I just think it's, you can, it's very telling the judge's reaction and how angry he is that, uh, you know, this lawyer won't give up his source of this information. He's more, it's giving, you know, uh, he's mad he got caught. So from what I understand, for the most part, ex parte hearings are mainly done in civil uh, proceedings. So like in criminal cases, it's not really done because there's nothing that you would have an ex, unless maybe with the defense, I feel like the defense more so than the prosecution, but if the prosecution is having a meeting with the judge in chambers, why would the defense not be there? It's their, uh, char it's their charge. It's their life on the line. It's their everything. So it makes no sense to have an ex parte meeting with judge in chambers and a sworn in witness without the defense even knowing about it uh, uh, in a trial of this magnitude in the middle of the trial it makes i mean it's really it's mind-blowing honestly so with that in mind let's listen i was told based upon information and belief that when we arrived at 8 30 9 o'clock today um he did not come into your courtroom until almost 11 11 30 and what i found out just recently this is not waived is that um, supposedly in chambers, this honorable court, honorable court reporter at times, honorable court at times, district attorney or district attorneys from the DA's office, as well as investigators, sheriff deputies, Mr. Copeland and his counsel uh, met together 
none of the defense team, to my knowledge, was aware that this was going on. And then somehow that email was CC'd to me. That never. Mr. Mr. Steele, can I interrupt you for just a second? I'm kind of disturbed because that's ex parte. This All that was an ex parte conversation. How did you find out about any of that? Well, I'm not disturbed too. What I was told was that Mr. Copeland said, and you haven't answered my question yet. I'm not. How did you? That question. You're not. No, I will not answer that. Question. Why will you not answer that question? Because I want to make sure that what I say is accurate. I'm not trying no, to. No, get no, no. Else I'm asking anything. you. How did you get this information? I'm not telling the court. What I'm saying is based on information. Okay. Please. Well, listen. If you don't tell me how you got this information, then you and I are going to have some problems. We can have. This. I have problems right now. Okay. I, 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 I look. I don't. I don't want to know about your problems. Okay. At this point in time, all I'm asking you at this point in time is, how did you come upon this information? You're. Look, if the case gets reviewed, the record's going to be available for, 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 for our appellate court and for whatever reason. But it's disturbing that how so, somehow you have surreptitiously gotten information in regards to the court's private ex parte conversation with a party. I mean, a I party, would, yes. a witness who was sworn in Friday, the court's telling, this is what I was told. If this is not true, not true. This court Mr. handed Steele, Mr. Me, Copeland. Tell me how, tell me how you perjury. got, tell me how you got the information. Let me, let, listen, whatever you want to do. Tell me how you got me. the information, then we can I, go ahead and go forward. I'm not going to say that. What I'm going well, to say is this. I was told, and I hope this concerns the court. It, it concerns told, me that you have proprietary information. Why is it proprietary? Information that, that, that you should not be having that was ex parte. Why? With a party. Why? The state of Georgia. How about the witness? How about Mr. Copeland, who supposedly announced he's not testifying and he'll sit for two years and then supposedly and that's this honorable court, okay. or excuse me, let me rephrase that, this court supposedly said, I can hold you until the end of this trial. Ms. Hilton supposedly said actually all of the defendants and then all 26 people are disposed of. Is that true? What this is, is coercion, witness intimidation, ex parte communications that we have a constitutional right to be present for. So I understand that you're upset towards me, but I don't know what I did. Mr. Steele, I, I still want to know, how did you come upon this information? Who told you? What I want to know is why wasn't Go I there? To hell. Why, sir, I'm going to hold you in contempt if you don't tell me who this information was. I don't tell me who this information don't was want to be held from. in contempt. Well, I'm not answering that question. That's attorney-client privilege information. I am not uh, attorney-client privilege. Unless you were in my chambers, that's I'm, the only way you can figure out. I am telling I tell you, you what. I'm going to give you five minutes. If you don't tell me, don't who, have to, I'm gonna, you don't tell me who it is, I'm going to put you. In, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put you in contempt because that is not attorney-client privilege. <laughs> Attorney work product privilege. I am not. How did you? Me. How did you get that information I supposedly from my chambers? Did somebody tell you? I'm not. You should have told me. Oh. You got five minutes. Well, you know, I don't need it. I want to continue. This is what I was told. Mr. Copeland says, Mr. Copeland made statements that he admitted to killing Donovan Thomas. And was, oh don't take my notes. No, 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 no. And he just walks out in the middle of the fucking attorney presenting a motion. It's crazy. Donovan Hello? Thomas. And was, don't take my notes. No, 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 no. Oh, my God. Girl, what the fuck? And they cut the feed. They cut. Y'all, this is. Scandalous! What? What? The judge walks out in the middle. Okay, and uh, wow, 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 wow. Uh, so that that happened, and there's gonna uh, there, we're. I'm sorry, I can't even talk right now. We're gonna look at a few more of these moments um, from this explosive hearing uh, in which the defense attorney is basically accusing the judge and the DA of. Uh, funny business okay the judge called for a five minute recess and when he came back he demanded to know how Steele had learned about this private meeting in the judge's chambers and what was said and here's where it gets complicated because it seems Steele is saying judge you're giving me an impossible yeah, choice here if i tell you i violate the ethics rules mr Steele, before i recessed um i asked you how did you get this information and it is not covered by work product there's only one way you could have gotten it so I'm going to ask you again, and I respect that, and it gives me no joy, but as, as you know, Georgia Rule of Professional Conduct, please check me, Rule 1.6, comment 5 reads, and this is what I have, 1.6 I know what the, I know what the rule says, but here's the thing. Well, I'm just But, but, you, but you've got, but, you, but in just, order, you know, you, interrupt you. you need to please tell me who you got it from. I'm not asking you some in substance of anything as of yet, okay? But I need you to tell me how you got the information. If you don't tell me how you got the information, I'm going to hold you in contempt. I understand. I don't want to be held in contempt. <laughs> I don't want to hold you in contempt, but you, oh. but, but, it, but it's, but this is so sacrosanct to have a conversation in my chambers parroted to you and others. It is that serious. Yeah. And that's why I raise it. It is that serious that we should have been there and it shouldn't have happened. Sir, that's a, that's a whole, that's a whole separate issue. And that's, that, that's and, why, that's why ex parte conversations are recorded. 
Why? Why would it be but, ex parte? Be, You're acting like it's ex parte. Under it's seal. ex parte. It, no, it's ex parte because that's what the state asked me to do. It's just like when you asked me I've for never, an ex parte conversation. I've never asked this on the court or any court to meet with me and a witness, sir. Tell, you're you're straying off the issue. I'm not. I'm the issue to is the issue is how did you who? Hello. How did you get this information? I understand, get it, together, I, promise you, I understand it. But what I'm trying to ask you is, if you look at common five, this is how I understand the law. You cannot. Uh, vi- you can't violate something and then and then use privilege. Okay? I'm not violating anything. Okay, but that's why I'm saying, how did you get the information? But just listen to what I'm trying okay. to tell you. I'm, you're, okay, you're, you're but saying, I, you're the, the privilege would, would occur. The privilege in 1.6 would occur right. if you if you were in the right place, right time to begin with. You weren't. But let me tell you. I'm just reading from it. But if I'm reading it wrong, I'm not trying to. It says 1.6 applies not merely to matters communicated in confidence by the client, but also to all information gained in the professional relationship, whatever its source. So you're asking me to break your order now, maybe. We're well, asking me. You know, I'm not saying your order, but to give you information. And you're saying it's not some substance, but I'm telling you, I can't do that under the bar rule. All right. Well, I'm going to hold you in contempt. And um, you can you can think about it. Five o'clock today, we'll see we'll see where you are. That stand on that point because no, that's well, not what I that's not what I understand the rule to be. I, I've not asked you some in substance of what was said. I asked you how you got it. I can't do that. Yes, you can because I have an idea how you got it. Well, your idea. I have may an be idea wrong. how you got it, but that's improper. Sir. Your idea may be wrong, and you're, you're asking improper. me improper. Listen, I told you the bitch. first time. And I'm not going to reach that wanna, I don't want to hold you in contempt, but if this is that serious. Judge, you cannot, ease, you cannot eavesdrop and get get information oh. that was not not meant for you to hear at that particular point in time. Oh. You, judge, you, oh listen, and, and listen, I'll, I'll do whatever you want to 5 o'clock or thereafter. But what I'm trying to tell you is, what? Your Honor, this is so serious to me. We need a hearing, and I'm moving for a mistrial. It is my understanding, based upon information belief, from whom? part of it. From whom? Well, I'd like to get the substance first, and then I then we'll okay. Talk well, then you, then you'll be in custody until then because well, then I, because because you need to tell me how you got the information. I'm not asking you what was said. You've already kind of given us some snippets of what you said. That tells me that somebody parroted that information to you. So, but you're assuming something because I told you already. Well, then uh, other than if, that, if you were, that if you, tells me that everything he's saying is right on the money, and you're squirming up there in your damn seat. Okay. I have never seen a judge so pressed, okay, beyond belief over this uh, motion that's being brought forth because of his impropriety, his uh, appearance of impropriety. It's very, very telling, and it's just red alert, red flags, every sort of alarm is going off that this is giving very much a guilty conscience, okay, from the judge. You were sitting, unless you were sitting in there with a recorder or Miss Love or Miss Hilton uh, or one of the deputies gave you that information or Miss Weaver shot you a rough copy of the transcript, there's only one other person that's left. Well, Your Honor. And, and if that person gave you that information or shared that information with you, she probably violated privilege. Well, let me let me tell you two things. One, I don't know, don't know how that is a privileged communication. It shouldn't well, be. Well, because she has a client she's supposed to represent. Who are you talking about? But anyways, about? I, I'm, I'm not going to have When I got this I'm information, further, I'm not going to have any further conversation well, with you about So he, there he was just basically accusing another defense attorney, the defense attorney of the witness who is, this is what this, is what this all is, um, in regards to the witness that was supposedly in the uh, judge's chambers during this ex parte meeting that was improper and the judge is on the bench basically accusing a, a defense attorney who is uh, one of the parties to this trial of like disclosing this information to another defense attorney. It's, it is beyond, that is beyond like the pale. The fact that this judge has not been removed or recused himself or, I mean, had some further action being taken against him is wild to me. And I have a feeling that it's coming, but he is just, I mean, I've never seen any judge look more um, corrupt and more just completely and utterly compromised. I want to know, the question still remains. I want to know how, who gave you the information? I'd like to know what information happened outside her presence. That's really it. You can go into custody at this point. Prosecutor Adrian Love, she actually asked that Brian Steele be allowed back in the courtroom for the rest of the day's proceedings. The judge eventually let him back in and at the end of the day discussed the contempt proceeding. So what happened? 
Ashley Merchant, who's a very well-known Atlanta yes, defense attorney, girl, who we recently saw during attorney. the attempt to... That's a bad bitch. Okay, when I saw Ashley Merchant walk her ass up in this court, that's when I knew. That's when I knew that this was something that I needed to cover because, okay, girl, I see you single-handedly taking down Fannie Willis one Rico trial at a time, Miss Ashley Merchant for the fucking win. Blonde bitches unite, okay? Love that for you. And she came in with the fire, with the heat, with the facts, and, you know, as she always does, as she always does, she's the one that dropped the fucking bomb on Fannie Willis's head when she brought to light her weird, creepy affair with the head prosecutor in charge of the Trump Rico trial and has since been utterly uh, embarrassed and dragged through the mud as the slut whore that she is for doing all of those dirty deeds uh, with her prosecutor that she inappropriately appointed after banging him when he was uh, a married man. So, but that's a whole other story. Uh, well, let's watch Ashley Merchant come in here and wreck shop all over this judge and this courtroom. Remove DA Fonnie Willis from the Donald Trump Georgia case. She represented Brian Steele during all this. Yes. And Merchant and a second attorney, Alex Susser, argued that <laughs> If Steele Girl, was in contempt hair. of what court, there him? needs to be a hearing because there's a difference between civil contempt and criminal contempt where Merchant was saying, if it's the latter, if it's criminal contempt, you need to hold a hearing for due process purposes. And another judge needs to hear this because Glanville is a witness in this issue. Judge Glanville disagreed. Is the criminal contempt, is it criminal contempt that you held him in? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you said you had a hearing earlier today. I, no, it was criminal contempt. I told him what the contempt was and that was... He refused to tell, you know, order the court, if counsel, as you know, if the court orders you to do something and you don't, that's criminal contempt. So I've asked him several times, please just tell me who it is that told you. That I didn't ask or inquire about anything that was said. I just want to know who it was. <laughs> now, Mr. Steele has indicated to us he does not okay, believe. This ponytail, he this fucking pony, this hairstyle, he, straight to jail, okay? Straight to prison. Uh, you know, You've got some fucking nerve coming up here with that ponytail and whatever's going on on top of your head, sir. I mean, you're out of line. I'm probably on your side because you're standing up there with Ashley Merchant, but let it go. Okay. At some point you got to let it go. Sorry. It's, the gig is up. The jig is up. It's just, just uh, mourn the loss and get on with it because absolutely not. He can answer the question without violating his duty of loyalty and duty of confidentiality to his client. So he is being placed in a position where he's either going to jail or he's going to commit an offense that will put his license to practice law at risk. And that is an untenable position to be in. And Mr. Steele is a zealous advocate for his client, and he is simply trying to protect that duty of loyalty and duty of confidentiality, because if he answers your question, it is very reasonable to assume and likely that he will be facing so a bar complaint that could result in um, a suspension yeah. or in, in the loss of his license. And so he's in a, in, a, in a very, very difficult position where if we were able to have a full contested hearing with the benefit of witnesses and an impartial judge where you're a witness, then everybody could present their side that. of the story. I, and I'm not doing that. The reason being is because that, that takes away the whole point of criminal contempt, and that is you do something, the court tells you to do something, order the court, and you don't follow, and you don't follow it. That's I didn't ask him to do anything. That's regular ass people, not the lead defense attorney in the middle of a trial, you fucking numb nuts, okay? Uh, you and I know that, okay? This is unprecedented. Uh, the whole Fulton County is unprecedented madness, uh, run rampant, okay? Legally, moral, and unethical. I just asked him to tell me. I know what the... Which is what, what, the, what, the, what, the, what the privilege is. The privilege is, is the conversation. I didn't ask him about that. I wanted to ask him about who, the person. And because Mr. that, because, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Mr. Steele has indicated to us that he does not believe he can answer that question without also violating the privilege. Mr. Steele, I am going to hold you under, um, still hold you in summary criminal contempt uh, pursuant to OCJ 15-1-3, oh. subpart 3, for your failure to comply with my earlier order to today. I'm going to order that you be taken into custody and uh, incarcerated in the Fulton County Jail for mo no more than 20 days for this contempt. 20 Those 20 days. days consisting of every weekend for the next 10 weekends. <laughs> and you'll be reporting to 901 wow. Wright Street, Northwest, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318 oh, wow. at 7 p.m. on Fridays. You'll be released on 7 p.m. on Sundays. And it's to commence. 
this Friday, June the 14th at 7 p.m. and not to end until Sunday, August the 18th at 20, uh, 2024 at 7 p.m. subject to further order of this court. And that will be entered and e-filed and you may take whatever steps um, you and your counsel deem uh, appropriate wow. um, after that. Okay? Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, oh, I'm going to file notes of appeal, but for whatever reason that doesn't take um, and you don't give a bond, then um, I'd ask that I can uh, be with Mr. Williams and we work on our case all weekend for all those weekends. Otherwise, I can't prepare. I speak with Mr. Williams all the time. That's up to you, and sir. I will. Sir, if, if that if that comes to pass, um, you have my uh, my uh, support. I will, I will I will talk with our sheriff and and uh, we may be able to make that made. work. Okay. So Glanville ended up signing an order holding Brian Steele in direct criminal contempt, demanding that he spend the next 10 weekends in jail. A motion to set aside the contempt was filed almost immediately, and in it, the attorneys reiterated what Steele had mentioned before, Georgia Bar Rule 1.6 regarding confidentiality. This is a lawyer shall maintain in confidence all information gained in the professional relationship with the client. But in a comment to the rule, it says, quote, Rule 1.6 applies not merely to matters communicated in confidence by the client, but also to all information gained in the professional relationship, whatever its source. Ding, ding, so that's what they're relying on there and why Brian Steele didn't have to reveal his source of information. The appeal also states, quote, hours after holding Mr. Steele in criminal contempt, the court stated that Mr. Steele can only purge himself of the contempt by telling the court from where he got information that he shouldn't have had. Thus, the court has imposed an illegal and inherently inconsistent punishment for this criminal contempt. Moreover, the court has involved himself in these proceedings, and thus the court must recuse and allow these proceedings to be handled by a separate court. So just a wild and incredible yeah. turn of events in this trial. So that's what's going on. That's what's going on. It is in shambles. It's in shambles. And I honestly don't know how it's going to be able to continue with this judge and this court going forward. I really cannot see how. Otherwise, it's, I mean, it's just, if they allow it to happen, it's just going to be a complete and utter waste of taxpayer money. All of these people's time. I'm sure the jury is beyond them, like beside themselves with like frustration and anger. First of all, at the length of this trial, and they're all having to be away from their jobs, not making any money, you know, like not being away from their families, having to sit through all of this bullshit, you know, having to come in and out of court because the judge keeps having to remove them so that he can have these fights with the defense attorneys. And it's just ridiculous. It's so crazy, y'all. Say what? I said, what's your pleasure, sir? Um, do you wish to give testimony? I know you don't want to give testimony in this case, but you've been given immunity in this particular circumstance, um, use immunity. So um, are you going to testify? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Mr. Copeland, good afternoon. Do you want to be here? Ma'am? Do you want to be here? I'm here. Okay. Wait, are you going to let me ask you some questions? Okay. Before we call in our jury, um, it has been brought to the court's attention um, that um, Mr. Copeland's uh, counsel, Ms. Bumpus, would like to be released. Is that correct, madam? Yes. Okay, all right. And that's the woman that he accused of uh, releasing this information to Brian Steele, who is the defense attorney that he decided he was going to break all precedent and lose his fucking mind over. This was the lady that he basically accused of saying uh, what was said in those chambers. So she's now uh, uh, trying to recuse herself from the case, being that she has been now um, accused in open court by the judge of impropriety and this is her client up on the stand and this was the testimony that was apparently so important they had to have this inappropriate ex parte meeting uh in the judge's chambers sir um mr copeland um is it your desire to release your counsel at this point in time she's fine she's fine <laughs> okay so do you wish to represent yourself in, in, in these particular, in terms of any issues you may have in this particular? Do I got a choice? I'm sorry? Do I got a choice? <laughs> yes, you do. And what are those? Well, you can keep your lawyer that you have right now. I don't want her. All right. You could, um, you could certainly hire, hire another lawyer or the court could appoint you a lawyer. Wow. <laughs> Hello? What I need a lawyer for? It's just the court is just asking you whether it's your it's your it's your choice, sir. I'm good. You're good. Yeah, Miss Bumpus, did you file an entry of appearance? All right. 
Did you, under the Uniform Superior Court rules, file a, um, a motion to withdraw pursuant to the Uniform Superior Court rules? I mean, I, I know you give an oral notice, but you has to be in writing, and he has 10 days to object. Say again. Attorney Gunn was counsel, and I was stepping in as a courtesy for judicial efficiency. By the name of Jeffrey Williams. I heard of him. He's a rapper. Okay. Do you know I know him. I don't know him as Jeffrey Williams. I know him as Young Thug. All right. And when you say you know him as a rapper, have you ever spent time with this individual? Yeah, I did. Okay. When is the first time you recall strike that? What do you refer to him as? Young Thug. Okay. When's the first time that you recall meeting Young Thug? Uh, at the studio. And roughly, what about what year are we talking about? Before I went to jail. Which time? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, before that, I went to the feds. So before oh, 2015. Girl. Do you see him in the courtroom today? Yeah. Can you identify him by article of clothing he is wearing? <laughs> Brown. <laughs> With dread, seeing this to the ball here, guy. All right. Is he sitting? Is, it, so, is anyone else on the other side of him? Look at his face. Look at his face. Look at his face. Look at his face. Huh? Think, think. That don't look like Brown. Thank you. I he was wearing black. You said that you met at the studio. Girl. How did you meet him at the studio? Through a friend. What friend? I really didn't meet him. I just saw him at the studio okay. when I was with a friend. What friend were you with? And I asked him, can I take a picture? What friend were you with when you saw him at the studio? Um, Doc. Was it anyone else? Huh? Was there anyone else? There's a lot of people that I don't recall who all the people was. Do you recall if Tick was present when you met with, when you first met Miss Young Thug? I can't recall. Mr. Thug? <laughs> you said that you met him at the studio, you asked to take a picture with him. Did your um, friendship or relationship develop after that? time that you met him in the studio. What you mean? Did you all develop a friendship? Mm -hmm. Did we develop a friendship? Yes. Mm -hmm. My definition of a friendship is yeah. not just kn knowing somebody or uh, knowing who somebody is. Oh, really? Okay. Did wow. you start hanging out with I him? I have a lot of friends. I started going to the studio a lot. Okay. Did you start hanging with him outside of the studio? I have. Okay. When you hung with him outside the studio, where type of places would you hang out with him at? Uh, but most of the time, he, he liked to be in the studio. Okay. My question is, when he was not in the studio and you hung out with him, where would you hang out with him at? Uh, we used to do fun stuff. Like I took my grandma car because I got mad at my mom, and then I saw him and had my friend come in, and he smoked with cigarettes. I want to do it because it's fun. It's fun to do bad things and drive into a car. So did you know that you could perhaps kill somebody? <laughs> yes, but I wanted to do hood rat stuff with my friend. <laughs> like, go to like... Uh, the movies? Getting bowling the aliens bowling? and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not the bowling alley. the kids, football game. I oh remember. my god. What? Uh, no way. <laughs> the fair. Church. Uh, roller skating. <clears throat> what the, the fuck was that them. noise? I'm sorry, hello? Um. <clears throat> what is that? The... that? <laughs> Why did it sound like somebody just farted or belched? And, like, what? This is... Okay, this is Blow almost too much. Um, I've been on shows. I mean, you correct it. Oh, you said on shows? Yeah, like when I watch him perform. All right. <laughs> Ew. And is this 
the shows, the bowling alleys, the, bowling, um, the club. The, the bowling alley are we talking about in 2014, <laughs> 2015, or some other time? Oh, God. 2014 only. 2014 only. Oh, you don't go bowling after that? That's sad. Why'd the bowling have to stop? And despite being given immunity by the prosecution, he spent the weekend in jail after refusing to testify on Friday. Copeland took the stand on Monday and let it be known that he wasn't going to do it. Hey, Mr. Copeland, good afternoon. Do you want to be here? Ma'am? Do you want to be here? I'm here. Okay. Well, are you going to let me ask you some questions? Okay. How old are you? Grown. Okay, what does grown mean? I'm an adult. Okay. And when you said you're an adult, what number in years are you? I plead the fifth. <laughs> does he have blonde hair in his picture? Is blonde and gold the same? Do you think blonde and gold are the same? I wouldn't just ask you that if I thought it. Yankee, 164 Echo Hotel, and 164 Echo. Get back. Yeah. <coughs> mm -hmm. All right, what? Excuse me. It's sir. I'm sorry, can you take a break? No, I said excuse me. Oh, okay. <laughs> sir, is it your intent to continue to testify today, sir? Yes. Okay. All right. Summon our jurors, please. You Shannon Little B? I thought I told you yesterday. Okay, but you didn't tell the jury. So is that the same three people? It's the same. Again, the same three individuals. Is that a yes for the record? Yeah. Now, do you, Shannon, and Demikion have the same relationship today as when you took any of those pictures that we just... Under 24-5-507, this court holds you in willful contempt, and uh, we'll see you on Monday. And we'll see, we'll see if we uh, can get some more testimony at that point in time. Take them into custody. And when you were younger, did you go to school? Yes. Where did you attend school? I don't know. I went, I went to a lot of different schools. Okay, where are all the schools you went to? I don't recall all of them. Oh, just tell me some of them. I only know when. Slater. Slater. Is that elementary school or middle school? Elementary. All right. Why you don't remember what middle school you went to? Did you go to middle school? I think I stopped. I did. Okay. How long did you go to? Did you finish middle school? Relevance. Oh, ruled. Yeah, I think. Okay. Did you go to high school at all? Yeah. All right. Can you take a moment and look at those pictures? Can you please look at those pictures? Do I have to look at them? Yes. Wait now. Tell me who you recognize in 380 Yankee. Me and Coco. Who's Coco? The ugly boy right here. Okay. Did you tell myself and my colleagues, Ms. Love and others, about Little D and Shannon being your big pull tonight in the row? Huh? Yesterday, did you tell myself, Miss Love, and a few of my other colleagues that Little D and Shannon were in the car with you? Who's in charge the of the camera? Of the murder. Get it together, the cameraman. I, I told you, and them. Did what I told investigators. Yeah, hello. In June, uh, when when Nut got killed, something different because I was trying to finish my way out of a situation. Mm -hmm. so, so I said, mm -hmm. I picked up D and Shannon. Mm -hmm. D never told me nothing. I made it up to clear myself up, and. Mm -hmm. Okay. And was that yesterday that you said that? Did you tell us that yesterday what you just said? You asked me to be truthful. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I didn't. And I told you. What I told the investigator back then wasn't me being truthful. So I'm telling you something that I didn't tell them because I ain't trying to go back to jail. I got it. But actually, it was yesterday. The first time you said this part, and now what you're saying today is what is truthful. What you're saying right now, what you're trying to tell the jury right now, is what you are now saying is truthful. This is what a great I'm trying witness. To tell you, my God, is our conversation was about something that I said in the past. I understand. I'm asking you. 
you can always tell it's going great whenever you have a uh, witness on the stand that you've called, uh, you know, as the state especially, that looks like a complete and utter liar, okay? That you're proving out to be a total um, joke of a witness. And not only that, he's admitting on the stand that he lied. Okay, yeah, that's just pretty much the opposite of what you want. That this is the witness they chose to, uh, you know, risk everything, the whole trial, over this witness who played them so bad on the stand and turned this whole entire trial into an absolute circus. Mr. Copeland, allow to finish this. Okay, all right. All right. Was that? Mr. Copeland, do you, you need to finish your answers? No, I need a break, Jan. Say again? I need a break. <laughs> do you recall what Thug said? in 2015 to Kel? Yes. Yes, you remember what Thug said? I don't recall what was said. I don't remember what was said. Okay. I don't remember me talking to the investigators about it. All right. Do you remember telling Detective Gaither that when Kel got on the phone, that Thug said the beef ain't over with until you pay for my window, you shot my window? Yes. Yes, you remember telling Detective Gaither that? I don't remember what I don't told the police. <laughs> this is going great. Let me ask you this. Are you just saying yes now to speed up your questioning? Most definitely. Okay. <laughs> Are you saying yes, that's what you told Detective Gaither? Oui. Hello? <clears throat> I know I, I know I ain't complete school, but I, I think I'm speaking proper English. <laughs> I told you, I don't recall nothing I said to no police. You keep sitting right here asking me the same question over and over and over and over and over. I'm tired of it. I'm drained. Oh, okay. Well, if you just answer the questions properly. I am answering the question. Or... You ask me, I say yes, yes. You keep... When I say yes, you ask me the same question over and over and over and over and over. But you, did you just uh -huh. tell the court and destroy that you're saying yes just to move the process along? I think I said it loud and clear. <laughs> so again, will you just answer the questions and we can move the process along? You keep asking. Okay, yes. Did Thug ever speak with you about his relationship with Nut? No. Did you ever observe Thug and Nut together? I know saw those two together. And the fact that they would allow him to keep sitting up there on the stage, they, they just keep going at him. They, I, I just don't know who in their right mind as a prosecutor trying to win a case would allow this witness to keep testifying. And just, it's... It, it's almost like counterproductive. I, you could swear that like they're trying to jeopardize their own case. It's 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 bizarre in a way, and they have them up there for like a long fucking time. After after this, like they're I mean just like days and days and days of him on the stand and just a moment after moment like this. It's it's just it's it's actual magic. I never been around those two together. Uh, no, it, it never crossed my mind. So how were you able to tell Detective Gaither that Nut and Thug was cool? Because they're questioning me, and I'm trying to get them off of me, and she asked me questions about Nut and Thug, I guess, and I'm telling her whatever she... She asked me, let's say she asked me a question about this guy. I'm going to say, yeah, I seen this guy. He's blue. Whatever she asked me, I'm going to say, I'm going to agree to that. I'm going to say whatever she asked me. If she asked me about th th this reporter right here, I'm going to say, yep, she's sitting outside me with white tennis shoes on. I'm going to say Ooh. something. Just because I want her to believe I'm telling the truth, uh... That I, I want her to, to get me out of jail. Well, she has a white tennis shoe, don't she? Don't you got a white tennis shoe? <laughs> she got on chucks. She's right, like, leave me right? out of this. What color your shoe is? <laughs> Girl! She got on chucks. So you tell the truth? She said, bitch, leave me out. What color your shoe is? She said, they white. <laughs> Wait, so you're telling the truth then? <laughs> yeah, it's the oh my. How does the court get dragged? <laughs> Look at this white lady. She don't know what to do with him. She is, uh, uh, she's beside herself right now. You know that, uh, you know, she she just don't even know what to make of this whole thing. And the judge is back here allowing this clown show to go on in his court. It is, oh my God, I just, I've never seen anything like this. And after court on Thursday, Mr. Copeland allegedly posted this on Instagram. Job, I'd seen on your application, you said you never went to jail. Me, correct. I never went to jail. I was taken. Copeland is going to be back in the hot seat once again on Friday. And of course, we will have a lot of the cross-examination. So he's a man.
man of nuance, okay? He, that's, if there's one thing you can say about him, he is a man of nuance, okay? He, he's, you know, he, you gotta be specific when you're asking him questions, okay? Because otherwise, he'll, he'll catch up in his, uh, in his shenanigans. I think Little Woody is my favorite, uh, character in, out of all of this cast of, uh, hooligans and buffoons. Um, it's very enjoyable to watch. So, there's now been calls for the judge's removal over all of this shenanigans. And it's just, a, it's just like I said, shambles, okay? Utter shambles. Fanny Willis is out here running her damn mouth off again at a black church. I mean, there's two things that Fanny Willis is going to do. It's going to be have sex with her lead prosecutor. And, um, and she's going to go running her mouth to a black church. Uh, Baptist church about how she's unfairly targeted and believe all black women or whatever other bullshit she spouts off of the mouth at 24-7. Uh, so it's just been crazy. And the attorney, Brian Steele, who's now like um, low-key a hero uh, amongst not only just lawyers, but uh, Twitter and, you know, the common folk of the United States uh, at large because of his stand that he took for his client, and I, I respect him a lot for that. So the last thing we're gonna look at is this this uh, TikTok person, uh, lawyer lady, who's gonna explain basically why the ex parte was so inappropriate. And I wanna know you guys' thoughts after this. So let's watch what she has to say. So ex parte just means that a party wasn't present. So in the case with the Young Thug trial, there was a meeting with the judge, the prosecutor, a witness and the witness's lawyer, um, and none of the defense attorneys were present, nor were they even told about it, apparently. So it doesn't necessarily mean when there is an ex parte communication with a judge that it's bad. There are situations where ex parte communications with judges are acceptable and kind of standard practice. One of those situations, which I deal with a lot in my law, uh, law practice, is when you have a client that needs a mental health evaluation to be done by the Department of Behavioral Health. You can go to the judge privately without having the state present and ask for an order ordering that mental health evaluation to be done. You do not have to clue the state into that um, process. So that's a standard ex parte practice. There's nothing negative about that. Where it becomes an issue is in this young thug case where this kind of discussion that the judge had with the prosecutor and this witness that had been a sworn uh, witness, that is very unusual. So it's not that it was ex parte, it's that it was an unusual and really unacceptable version of an ex parte communication with a judge. And it got even stranger that this judge didn't try to say, hey, here's what happened, um, you know, nothing bad happened, let me explain everything to you. That's not what he did. And instead, and this is where I want people to understand this, why it's so interesting, because instead he went after the leakers and ex parte doesn't necessarily mean confidential. So if I go to a judge, like I said, you know, to get a mental health evaluation ordered and he it's confidential because I have gone to the judge and kind of asked for it to be confidential. I can turn around on an ex parte communication with a judge for a mental health order and tell the whole world that I did it. I can tell the prosecutor I did it. There's nothing to stop me from doing that. Um, so it's not by definition confidential. So it's really interesting to me that this judge is so obsessed with who the leakers were because it, it makes me wonder if not only was there an ex parte communication, but they were told not to tell anyone about it, which is an even more concerning level of of misbehavior in my view so ex parte is not automatically against the rules but it sounds like it should have been in this case and it doesn't necessarily mean confidential so the fact that he's so upset about there being leakers makes this even more suspicious very suspicious indeed that's suspicious yeah, that's, that's weird so yeah, this is where we're at, people. This is where we're at, okay? Uh, our, our justice system is a joke. We are a third world country. You know, it's official. And, um, you know, we're not to be taken seriously anymore at all. So I want to know your thoughts on all of this. And is it so over for Fannie Willis and the entire judicial system over there in Fulton County, Georgia? or not let me know your thoughts in the comments and please like the video if you guys liked it and subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see more like this and uh yeah let's just all pray guys 
pray that we get through it and that one day we all see Jesus. So until next time, I will see y'all later. Goodbye. I just tell the truth and telling the truth is crazy in a world full of lies. If you mix brilliance with bravery, that we can ignite something, even this conversation alone can ignite the people. The time is now to express and for people to believe in themselves. The time is now for it to be okay to be great. People in this world shun people for being great, for being a bright color, for standing out. But the time is now to be okay to be the greatest you.